Hi everyone, my name is Liana Pan. I'm the founder of Freedom Property Investors. In today's video, I want to share with you some insights about the Melbourne market and why I feel that right now is the best time to get into the Melbourne property market. Now, in, at Freedom, we take a top-down approach to our research to find the best areas to invest in in Australia. Now, a lot of you may know that Melbourne has enjoyed a lot of capital growth over the past few years, and you might think that it's had its run in this current cycle and pretty much maxed out on its capital growth. But I will suggest that the factors that are driving the growth over the last few years are actually going to continue into the near future. Okay, so because there have been some fundamental shifts in the demand drivers. So let's look at some of the key demand drivers here. So the first one is population growth. Now we all know that Melbourne has been a star performer in terms of population growth. In the past few years, it's been number one consistently in terms of its population growth. Now, in the, in the past 12 months, that growth has actually, in fact, accelerated. If we compare that to Sydney and Brisbane, for example, Melbourne's growth rate is actually 50% higher. Now, the population gap between Sydney and Melbourne is actually under 400,000 people. So at this rate, Melbourne will catch up to Sydney in about 15 years. Now, the median house price gap between Melbourne and Sydney at the moment is around, around 30%. What I would suggest to you is that when Melbourne catches up to Sydney, that gap will really close. So I can expect to have better performance in Melbourne compared to Sydney over the next 10, 15 years. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is job growth. And that's actually related to population growth. You can see here that in the first column, the number of jobs created for Victoria was about 100,000 jobs over the last 12 months. Over the same time frame, New South Wales has only created about 60,000 jobs. So the jobs created in Victoria is about 50% more than New South Wales. So it's a similar pattern to population growth rate. Now the reason why that's the case, it's actually affordability. Now not only is the residential market becoming extremely unaffordable for Sydney, um, it, the same thing is happening to the commercial market. So companies are finding that they can find much cheaper rent, commercial rent in Melbourne, and they can still have the same access to, skill, to the skilled workforce down in Melbourne. And so that trend will actually continue into the near future. So it's no surprise then that Melbourne is actually trending down in terms of its vacancy rate. In fact, it's the lowest vacancy rate in the country at the moment, and it's been historically low for Melbourne as well. Now, I'm not suggesting that everywhere around in Melbourne, every suburb, is experiencing critical shortage of rental housing. Certainly, there are few number of suburbs, such as Melbourne CBD, South Melbourne, South Yarra, South Bank. These are the areas that have a lot of high-rise, high-density apartments. Now, apart from these areas, though, the overall Melbourne market um, is at a critical shortage of rental housing. Now, this is what's getting us very excited, and that's the introduction of First Home Owners Grant, uh, First Home Owners Incentives for Melbourne people. They remove stamp duty for up to 600 grand of purchase price, and whether it be new properties or existing properties. There are also concessions for homes between 600 grand and 750 grand. On top of that, the Victorian government has introduced the Combs VIG program where you can co-purchase with the government and only have to put down 5% deposit if you're a first home buyer. And if you're in regional Victoria, they will double your first home owner's grant to $20,000. Now, as an investor, you might think that this doesn't affect you, but it actually does. 
See, what this does is actually lowering the threshold to enter the property market substantially. Before this change, you'll need over $60,000, close to $70,000 to get into the property market as a first home buyer. After this change though, you only need as little as $20,000. So that's actually pushed a lot of people into you know, being able to afford their first home. And that's going to drive up demand significantly, especially for homes, properties under 600 grand. So let's look at what happened when they did this last time. So back in the beginning of 2009, the Victorian government doubled the first home on this grant for a period of 12 months. And you can see here that the median house price in Melbourne went up by 30% over that window. So we're expecting that a similar change, the similar growth will happen this time over the next 12 months as well. So just to recap, why do we love Melbourne? And why do I feel that it's the best time to get into the Melbourne market right now? Melbourne has enjoyed the highest population growth for a number of years. It's got a very strong, very solid economy um, and very high job growth as well. And because of that, Melbourne has hit a critical shortage of rental properties. And on top of that, with the introduction of massive incentives for first home buyers, you can see why these factors combined are going to really push Melbourne market even higher. I trust that you found this video helpful and I would like to invite you to come along to our next information night where you can find out more about how to do your research to select the right property in the right area at the right time to maximize the growth of your portfolio. I hope to see you soon.